This is Abe Friedhanser from cinemadailywest.com, and I'm so thrilled to be speaking with Demian Bachir about the show Let the Right One In. How are you today? I'm good, Abe. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. How familiar were you at all, if at all, with the uh, novel or the original film before signing on to this show? I I was already a big fan of the film. Uh, and uh, my first curiosity was how would you make two wonderful hours into 10? Uh, and I think Andrew Hinderacker's adaptation uh, is, is brilliant because it's not only a love letter to the actual film, to the original film, but he made it richer and, 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 and better and more exciting and even sexier. He, he enriched the whole thing with, you know, different new subplots and, uh, and new characters. Uh, so it's, it, it, it was a pleasure to read it and it was a double pleasure to shoot it. And it's, it's, it's just an ima inimaginable uh, pleasure to see the final result. You know what I mean? It's like, it's been, it's been a, 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 a very dear project that, uh, it took a lot from everybody to make, you know, it was, it was physically and emotionally and, and mentally exhausting. In one of the longest winters in New York, uh, lots of uh, night shoots and lots of, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was very demanding in, in different ways, but we had one of the best crews ever that I have ever, you know, had the chance to work with and a phenomenal cast. Well, it's interesting to hear you describe it as a pleasure to make and then, you know, as very, you know, physically challenging. But I think it's a show, there is a certain darkness that could sort of dominate it, but it doesn't have that. And I think that's really rewarding because I think there are so many shows about vampires out there. And a lot of people probably come and say, here's another show, here's another one like this. But this one has a, it's not a comedy at all, but there is a, a lightness to it, which is sort of cool. There's, there's a, 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 a little bit of uh, flirtation uh, and that territory, just a, just a little bit, uh, just enough to make things more appealing and more, you know, empathetic. Um, I I I think this 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 show, and I couldn't agree more with you because uh, it is different in many ways. You know, this 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 is not your typical vampire story. This goes beyond the genre, and, and it goes beyond fantasy or horror. You know. Uh, type of film or, or series. This, this is a very, very human experience. And we talk about many different things that are a, a, a key subject matter on everyone's table every day, anywhere you look, uh, you know, all the way from addiction to bullying schools, to the love, you know, that we as parents have for our kids and everything that we will, you know, always ready and willing to do in order to keep them, to keep them safe and to keep them uh, healthy, and in this case, well fed, right? Yeah, and I know that you've done, you know, it's, uh, an alien movie, but is there, is it difficult to take some of this storyline seriously, or you know, what is the mood <laughs> like on set? <laughs> well, you know, you you make a great point because I'm not a big fan of horror films or horror series or horror anything. Um, I, I just don't like to pay to be scared. Um, and I think the reason why I, I wanted to explore that territory, of course, you know, when, when, when Ridley Scott invited me to literally be on that spaceship, who, you know, what actor in the right mind would say no to Ridley Scott, right? So that was a, a double gift because it was it was a, a pleasure for me to be there you know just just to meet the, the the legend i remember my audition with ridley scott was it was not an audition it was a meeting and we talk about you know i think i think we talked 10 minutes or 15 minutes about the script and then we talked about life and love and food and tennis and uh, football you know soccer of course uh, that we both love and uh and that was it. And then I had the chance to explore the horror territory in a way, but then I did The Nun. And The Nun, it was like a, like a different type of approach to it. And I, I had the best time of my life. You know, I had so much fun doing it. And what I'm trying to say is that, and I did The Grudge also, 
and now let the right one in only because it's a lot of fun to make these things. You know, this is way I'm, I'm, I'm sign me in. You know, whenever you have a horror or a story, it's so much fun to make it. It's so much fun to do it. Uh, way better than watching it for me. <laughs> I think I, I definitely would agree. I haven't made one myself, but I think I would agree with that. Um, but I, I do, I do want to talk a little bit about episode seven, uh, which this interview will air after that. That uh, will post after that episode has aired. It feels in a lot of ways like it could have been the pilot because that first episode really does take us in where you know your characters are already aware of what's going on, everything, and this one is. It's a backstory, but it, it, it's sort of the beginning, right? Totally. I, I fully agree with you because uh, this is the beginning. This explains everything and everything that, you know, the lead characters have been through. Uh, I remember a, a, a beautiful play by Peter Schaefer uh, called Equus. Uh, he also wrote Amadeus. And uh, and I did that play a long time ago when I was 19 in Mexico. And the play is about a kid. This is how the play starts. A kid goes to a psychiatric hospital because he had taken off the eyes of six horses. That's how this begins. And then during the next two hours, they tell you why and what happened. So to me, the fact that we initiate this series the way we did, you know, the way Andrew Hinderacker did it masterfully, I think it was perfect. And it reminds me a lot of that, you know, mechanism. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful dynamic because then you engage everyone into it and, uh, you know, and, and everyone wants to know why. How did this happen? You know, how did you guys get to this point? And, um, and the beautiful thing about episode seven is that Andrew fulfills that promise. You know, he meets your expectations and he provides all the information that you needed to know. Why, you know, this, 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 uh, the, the soul of these two characters have been rocked in, so, in such a heavy way. And then you see why. Have you been following along with, you know, fan responses to this show? Uh, yes. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, everyone is really uh, not only very much engaged into it, but what they say is that it is very powerful. And it's not only entertainment, but it, it hits you in your heart. It, again, in some subject matters, you know, that we live daily you know and and uh and people love that only because you know we human beings are are of that we we love that we 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 love to be moved we love to be we love we love it when they touch our hearts and and that's pretty much the response that i'm getting what can you preview about the finale <laughs> all i can say is that you know, it surprised me as a reader when I got episode 10. And uh, all, I, all I can say is buckle up, man. Buckle up and uh, be ready because this is going to blow you away. And what do you think about the prospects for a season two? I, you know, I, I never, I never have bigger expectations than what I can see, uh, things that are tangible. Um, and only because, you know, it kills you. It's, it's, it's something crazy. And I learned that a long time ago when I, when I was going out to auditions, when I, you know, when I first arrived in the U.S. Uh, you go to an audition and then you, you have to forget about it. You can't be you know, looking at the telephone to, you know, for it to ring. It, it, it's just crazy. You know, it, it will kill you. Uh, so when when I have a pilot, that is all I have. And I put everything I have in it. And if they order for season, then I open a new bottle of champagne and celebrate. And if and when they order the second season of Let the Right One In, I, I will open two bottles of champagne and so on and so on and so on. Uh, so I, I I think we have a phenomenal show. Uh, 
a, a show that is unique, show that is brave, a show that is uh, uh, very, very powerful. And uh, with one of the best casts I have ever seen on any series, let alone, you know, you can only imagine what honor represents for me every, every time they say action. You know, whether I have scenes with Madison or Ian or Kevin or Grace, Anika, beautiful Anika, uh, it's a joy, you know. So we are already happy. Can we have, can, can we be happier? Yes, we can. Join us for second season. For season, for season two. <laughs> well, I do want to revisit a show of yours that did get a second season, but should have gotten much more than that. And that was The Bridge. I'm a big fan of that show. And I think it's because that's another one. You can't really say you enjoy that show, but that's a it's a very, very good show. What are your memories of, of that series? You know, it's, it's, it's one, of, one, of, one of my favorite things that I've ever done. You know, it's just one of the, the, the I have dear memories out of it and uh, from it. And uh all I can say is that it, we we were probably too deep into something unique, into into something, into something even you know something not only timely, timely, but uh, but it was a little bit daring in different ways. That show was the first time we talk about the responsibility that both countries have over sharing the same border because it's always you know mexico is always the bad guy and mexico is always you know the corrupt side of it and all that but this is this was the first time we were talking about equal responsibilities on corruption we were talking about corruption on both sides of the border we were talking about trafficking on both sides of the border weapons trafficking human trafficking you know, we were talking about many different issues on both sides of the border and how how is it to be neighbors and how difficult was that in a very passionate way, in a very powerful way. I think, uh, can, can you imagine if they order season three, four, seven, 18, 14, we'll still be there and uh, with great material because, you know, this life that we have together it's forever, we're forever bound, you know, bonded. Yeah. Uh, and it is, it's, it is a dear show. You know, I, I, I just, I just love every, every aspect of it. And, 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 and the team that we had, you know, Elwood Reed, our showrunner was the head of a phenomenal team. You know, everybody was, you know, we, we had the best one of some of the best uh, crews ever. And uh, and Diane Kruger, you know, she became one of my best friends and uh, such a lovely, lovely human being and a phenomenal actor too. And and the rest of the cast, you know. So yes, I'm I'm I'm, I'm always happy when people talk to me about the bridge. You've Thank also you. made a lot of great films like A Better Life and you know Che, The Hateful Eight. But I know you've yeah. also done plenty in Mexico. Is there <laughs> anything that fans of yours in the U.S. should really try to seek out that we might not have seen here? Mm. You should do as Quentin Tarantino did. Just, 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 I'm just saying, you know, when I met him in a, in a dinner uh, that, uh, uh, in which Diane Kruger was honored, uh, she invited me and uh, I went over there and Quentin was there, they're good friends also. And then he told me, Damien, I have been on a Damien Bichir marathon over the last two weeks, watching everything you've done, my friend. And I want to send you a script. So that was that was the hateful eight. And uh, so God bless his heart, you know, because a lot of people, they, they want to work with you. They send you a script. They make you an offer. They want you, they want you to be a part of their, you know, new project. But they, 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 very few of them are, you know, have, the curiosity of uh, taking a look at everything you've done. And uh, and I have to say, you know, um, I'm, I've been very, very lucky because I've, I've, I've made films in Mexico, in Ireland, in uh, uh, Colombia, Bolivia, Argentina, Spain, um, UK, France, and uh, and of course the US, right? And there's, there's something from each country that I, I would love you to see, you know? I, I'm, American Visa that we did in Bolivia, 
uh, muerte en Buenos Aires, death in Buenos Aires that I did in Argentina, uh, many films in Spain, you know, and no one would talk about us when, when we're dead, it's one of them, or uh, Sin Noticias de Dios, they call it Don't Tempt Me in the U.S. It's a, it's a beautiful film with Victoria Abril and Penelope Cruz. Um, uh, there's a beautiful family film that I did in Ireland called uh, The Runway. Oh my goodness, you, you, sh you should really take a look at that one. And then, you know, many Mexican films, Sexo Pudor y Lágrimas, Danica most recently, uh, Rojo Amanecer. Uh, oh man, so many. Well, it's a lot of homework for sure. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Is there anything that you else do you have coming up that you want to share? Uh, yeah, if you like great music, you should take a listen to E4. Now, you might ask yourself, what is E4? And I will tell you right now, because guess what? Today's your lucky day. So I will tell you what E4 is. E4, if you like chess, is the first move, basically the most popular first move in chess, right? E4. Peon goes to E4. That's why I call my album E4. And it's one of the best albums in history. It's the only great album in history without a Grammy. This is so great. This is how great this album is. It's, a, it's an album that I, that I did during the pandemic. I put together nine songs and I did it all. Only Paul McCartney tried to equal that. And, yeah, you know, this is way better than Paul McCartney's. And um, so, yes, I do everything, engineering, voices, instruments, everything. It's a phenomenal album, E4. And then uh, there's a film that I did in Rome with beautiful Angelina Jolie and no less beautiful Salma Hayek. That's coming up uh, soon, I hope. It's called uh, Without Blood. And, uh, and then we have many different projects, you know, going on all the time, uh, things that I'm putting together. I want to direct again. And uh, I will finally have the opening of uh, my first film in Mexico. It will be in December 2nd in Mexico City, in the Mexican Cinematheque. Uh, it's, a, it's a dear film that uh, Jorge Perovorria, one of uh, Cuba's uh, greatest uh, glories, is in it. Arcelia Ramirez, Lubica Paleta, Eva Longoria, uh, Jason Patrick. Uh, I have a stellar cast. Um, I wrote it, directed, uh, produced it. I act in it only because Brad Pitt said no. Yeah, you know Brad, he's speaking, and he doesn't speak Spanish. So that was that was that was that was a, a turn off. He said, "Yeah, I would like to try, but uh, it would take you know a few years for me to learn Spanish." But anyway, so that's coming up on December second, and then uh, we have the World Cup. So. Yes, there is this issue that they should treat better everybody, you know, in that country. And they know that. And I hope they will change things and that they make things better for everybody. And then, you know, the glory of football. Oh, Lord. Poetry under grass. Okay, that's it. Well, for more great conversations like this, you can check out the Cinema Daily US YouTube channel. Make sure to watch the final episodes of season one of Let the Right One In on Showtime. Thank you so much, Damian. It was a pleasure to speak with you today and good luck with that premiere. Thank you, my friend. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.